You are a self-sabotager. How do you know you self-sabotage? I'll get to that in the phone call. Here's what you do. Every time your life gets good, you do something to make it bad. Every time you find a good man, you act like a bad woman in order to ruin that relationship because you cannot handle a good relationship. So you pull that relationship down to a certain level because you can't handle happiness and laughter, but you know how to handle fist fights and arguments. And so as, as soon as you get some good stuff, you, you behave in a manner that, that, that is not conducive to your breakthrough. You've seen this all the time. <coughs> You've seen this in which people have been promoted. They were a great worker, but the moment they got promoted on their job, they stopped being a good worker and they stopped showing up. You know why? Because the moment that life called them to go to another level, they self-sabotaged. Most of you would not go to the next level. Not because you don't have the brains, you have the brains. Not because you don't have the talent, you have the talent. Simply because you don't have the habits of a winner or the self-esteem of a winner. And so what we're gonna talk about tonight, I got three things for you, I normally have 10. I have three things for you tonight. Now, that's not necessarily a good thing, because if I have three, and if you've been on this phone call before, that means I'm probably going to hit you in your stomach a few times, okay? Let's identify self. Self-sabotaging is when you do something that is the exact opposite of your dreams and desires. It doesn't matter, listen, listen, I don't care how cute you are. <coughs> I don't care how sexy you are. I don't care how much confidence you have in your hair and it's natural and you got curls and or you're a blonde. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you like your feet, that they're pretty. All of you somewhere suffer with something. <laughs> the truth is, most of you, everybody thinks you're smart, but you don't. And the truth is, you never thought you were ugly until somebody told you you were. Don't miss me. This is a trans, okay, let me, let me, because I know I got a lot of new people. I have a lot of new people. You will, you, you are going to be with me for the next 52 minutes. So let me, just, <coughs> let me just help you out real quick. This is not going to be an easy from I came here to disrupt your soil, is what Lisa Nichols would say. The way Antonio T. Smith Jr. says, I came here to rip your skin off. I didn't come here to let you be comfortable. I didn't come here for you to be cute. You know how your grandmother said, if you put on a big jacket, you wouldn't have a cold. You out there trying to be cute, you didn't put on the right jacket. Well, listen, I came over here to put on the right jacket of you. So let me tell you something. People have helped you have low self-esteem. <coughs> Don't miss this. Don't disregard this. Don't unquestion this. Don't even question it. Know that if you're overweight, underweight. Know that if you're <coughs> if you think you're too black or too white or whatever it is, people put that into you. And they put that into you, you let it seep there. And because you let it seep there, that's when you <laughs> thought. It what, you did not know that you had ugly feet until somebody told you. Come on, somebody help me out. When you were four years old, running around naked, you wouldn't worry about nothing. When you were three years old, changing your diaper, you would you just run around. You don't worry about anything. But now, you're doing everything possible not to live your dreams and your deepest desires, okay? So self-sabotaging <clears throat> is a method in which you use for coping with difficult situations or high expectations. Listen to me. Every time you have to get into a difficult situation, every time you have to deal with high expectations, you self-sabotage. Listen to me and listen to me very well. Every single time that you have to deal with high expectations, you self-sabotage. Every time things get too difficult, you self-sabotage. Here's a few examples. You're getting promoted. Ooh, all of a sudden you don't know it. <laughs> Some of you self-sabotage so much that every time you get around a dominant person, you act like you can't think. I'm trying to help somebody. See, I, I, got, I got some folk in front of me. I've already resonated with their spirit. Use the hashtag plant better. I'm getting some, uh, uh, yeah, you understand. Listen. You've been smart. You've always been smart. This is a smart moment for you, 
But every time you get around somebody that thinks they are smart, you act like you don't. I know people who, who can cook very well, <laughs> but since their spouse thinks they're the best cooker in the house, they pretend that they can't cook. Come on, somebody help me out. You understand what I'm saying? I know people who know how to drive and know exactly where they're going, but would still ask for directions to where they're going. You know why? Because you've convinced yourself that you don't have the permission to be smart. That you don't have the permission to be gifted. That you don't have the permission to lead. Self-sabotaging occurs when you have high expectations. And when those high expectations become difficult. And listen to me. Every time it becomes difficult, you begin to act like a loser. But you are not a loser. You've been the greatest person on planet Earth, always and forever, in your physical form. There's never been nobody better than you. Nobody can seek, speak or uh, sing with your voice, but you let other people have your voice. If you, if you keep letting people have your happiness, they'll let you down every time. I feel like I need to give you a whole bunch of candy. If, if, if you let people have your happiness, You'll let them break you down every time. But you know what you do? Here's my happiness. My mama didn't give it to me, so you can have it. Let me down. I know I should be happy all by myself, but I love you. I'm lucky to have you. No, 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 no. <laughs> you ain't lucky to have nobody. They're lucky to have you. You are the sexiest thing that ever walked on planet Earth. And if that makes you feel uncomfortable, you have work to do, but don't worry about it. We're about to do the work tonight. So every time you experience difficulties, every time it gets higher to your expectations, every single time, you unconsciously ruin that so you can have an excuse to fail. That's the truth. The truth is you don't want to win. The truth is you want to fail. The truth is, Everybody on planet Earth has exactly what they want. Everybody. You have, listen, I want you to examine your life right now. I want you to look at your life. I want you to look at your life. I want you to look at your life. You got exactly what you wanted. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether you're willing to admit it or not, or whether you're conscious of it or not, where you are in life is what you actually desire. You keep saying you want six figures, but you don't want it. You want to be careless and you want people to blame. Because you understand if you actually make six figures, you got to look like you have six figures and actually have it. Some of you, you want to be in a relationship, but you don't want to be married. Did you hear what I just said? So you want to be in a relationship, but you don't want to be faithful. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? You, you, you want to be happy, but you don't want to lose arguments. So you can't be happy and win every argument. That's not happiness. Okay? So, understand. Number one. Here's the number the one thing I'm going to give to you. You self-sabotage because it is tied into your regret. That's number one. For tonight. Number one. You self-sabotage because it is tied into your regret. Let's get, let's get. You, you do tied, your self-sabotage is tied into your regret. Now, <coughs> here's the conundrum here or the paradox. <coughs> Self-sabotaging leads to regret and also comes from regret. It's a two-edged sword. Okay, listen to me. Self-sabotaging will lead you to miss opportunities that you didn't deserve to miss. Self-sabotaging will lead to broken relationships when you didn't deserve to have them broken. Self-sabotaging will lead you to be angry at good people in your life and then treat the bad people in your life correctly. I'm trying to help somebody. Self-sabotaging will force you to make bad decisions will lead you to regret. But then when you've been self-sabotaging for so long, Every time you feel the feeling of regret, you self-sabotage. It, it is a reoccurring cycle. It, listen, listen, 
self-sabotage, the number one killer. I, I, I do this every day, all day. Um, do you know who self-sabotages the most? Here's who self-sabotages the I, I don't, in my experience, in my experience, with the people in which I train and coach, the people who self-sabotage the most are religious people. Receive this all in your situation. Religious people, now I don't know what your denomination or religion is. Religious people have convinced themselves that God wants you to suffer. Oh, you're going to hear me today. And you're going to hear all this. And you might as well drop all the negative comments you want. And I'm, the truth is, I'm not even going to read them if they're negative. Let me just tell you what, it's, what the truth is. You're going to get this today. Here is what is the truth. Religious people have used an external higher supreme deity to convince themselves that they don't get to do the hard work to win. Oh, you're going to hear me today. You're so <laughs> convinced that if, if it's in your religious deity's will that you won't work. And so you keep yourself in a cycle in which you can't work because if you don't have it, you deserve not to have it. Some folk, I know folk, I know black folk who believe they curse. Because somebody that twisted scriptures and told you you curse and you live a life of that reason. Let me tell you something, you don't have to be a drunk if you don't want to be a drunk. You don't have to be addicted to drugs if you don't want to be addicted to drugs. I'm not saying it's not a sickness somewhere. You don't have to have low self-esteem if you don't want to have it. But here's the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, when you self-sabotage, it comes from two places, but it's all one place. Place number one, your self-sabotaging will lead to regret. Place number two, when you regret, you start self-sabotaging. Some of you right now, You've been in bad relationship after bad relationship after bad relationship after bad relationship because you self-sabotage. This is these are facts. You don't have to like me on this phone call. I didn't come here for you to like me. I didn't come here to offend you, but I didn't come here to preach separatism, but I did come here to disrupt your soil, as Lisa Nichols would say, and I came here to rip your fool skin off. You're self-sabotaging because you regret and every time you regret you self-sabotage here's a better way to say that in life you will not get what you want what do I always tell you staff you get who you are, who you are. there you go in life you will not get what you want you will get who you are here's the problem when you think it you get it then when you get it you feel a certain way about it and you think about that then you get it again Watch it, watch it. Listen to me, I'm gonna say it again. In life, you don't get what you want, you get who you are. So when you think something in your inner mind, you manifest that thing in your outer world. But then when you see it in your outer world, you think about how you feel about that. And then when you think about how you feel about that, it creates thoughts. And then when it creates thoughts, you get it again. I'm gonna say it three times because everybody's not hearing me. When you think it, you get it. When you get it, you feel a way about it. And then you think how you feel about it. And then you get that again. What am I saying? The only way to get what you want is to break your cycle of thinking. Not your cycle of getting. And that's where you go wrong. Where you go wrong is you, 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 sir, you, ma'am, you, you, sir, you, ma'am, you. <clears throat> what you do wrong is you keep thinking if you get something, you'll feel better. No, no. When you feel better, you'll get better. Don't worry about it. I'll clap all by myself. You need to understand this very much. What you get does not determine your feelings. Your feelings will determine what you get. Every time. Every single way. So, what is regret? Well, regret is an uncomfortable feeling. <clears throat> indicating that something you did or failed to do can't be changed. Oh, you're going to write this definition down today. What is regret? Remember, I tell you, it's your self sabotaging, right? This is week two, or this self sabotage this is coming from regret. So, what is regret? Well, regret is this uncomfortable feeling that indicates what you did or what you failed to do cannot be changed. Okay, third time. Let me see if they're going to get a little bit more of this here. 
Regret is the uncomfortable feeling that something you did or did not do cannot be changed. Now, now, now let's just break this down for a second. Can I, can I talk to my religious folks just for a second? You are religious. Who gave you permission to put your actions above the sovereignty of your deity? You don't understand what that means. I'll say it again. The definition says something you did or did not do cannot be unchanged. That means you so much of God that God can't change it. Oh, I'm walking hard today. Here's the problem with all of you. For whatever reason, you think you're so powerful you can knock off your supreme destiny as if your God, whatever you believe, is not in charge of your supreme destiny. Let me help you out, and I'm going to say this again in part four because there surely will be one. Let me help you out. <clears throat> there are no mistakes. You have not messed up your life so much so that you cannot get to where you need to be. But the problem is, for whatever reason, you have placed your ego and your self-sabotaging above your Lord. Now, I'm not trying to make this religious. I'm not trying to make this, that's because that's not this phone call and I don't deal it really, I don't deal with those circles although I'm in those circles. Here's what you need to understand. You need to understand that you've convinced yourself that you're so powerful you messed up your whole life. How is that even scientifically possible? I, that's not even scientifically possible. Even if you are an atheist, even if you're an atheist, even if you're an atheist, you believe that this is bigger than you. Like, even if you're an atheist, you believe this is bigger than you. So how is it that all of a sudden you're bigger than your supreme destiny? Does that make sense? You, 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 you can't do that. Okay? So... Here's how you move past regret. Anybody want to know that there? I'm going to teach you now how to move past regret. Number one, and I'm still in number one. Here's how you move past regret. You ready to take notes? Number one, accept your life just as it is. Number one, if you want to move past your regret so you can stop self-sabotaging, <coughs> accept your life just as it is. Oh, you're going to receive this. Hashtag plan better. Accept your life for just as it is. A way I like to say that is give yourself permission to be in the valley. If you're not skinny, hey, you a good looking thick girl. I'm trying to help somebody out here. No, I'm, I'm just trying, okay, I got a bunch of hands up now. You, you ain't, who said you gotta be skinny to be cute? Give yourself permission to not be skinny and you'll have the confidence of a mighty fine good looking woman. Did I just help you in this place? Give yourself permission to be broke and you simultaneously give yourself permission to make money and save. Uh-oh, uh-oh, watch it, watch it. When you don't give yourself permission to be broke, you spend all your money to front. <clears throat> you spend all your money to put on a facade. When you don't give yourself permission to be broke, you spend all your money Try to act like you're happy. If you want to move past your regret, if you want to move past your regret, give yourself permission to be right where you are. You got anger problems, accept that. You won't have no problem. Whatever that is, whatever's bothering you, accept such a thing. And when you do that, you will not have any more problems. <laughs> Step number two. Moving past your regret. <coughs> Assess your current situation. See, did, did, you, did you catch that? See, number one was give yourself permission to be where you are. Number two was assess your current situation. Everybody in here and everybody over the phone and on the video and stuff, you went, oh, I can do that. No, you can't. No, you can't. No. No, you can't. To assess your situation means to get out your feelings, ego, and pride and objectively receive the new information so you can fix it. Let me tell you what I teach my people. You too arrogant to do such a thing. The definition of arrogance is not being able to receive new information. 
So how you gonna assess your situation? You won't let new information in. Oh, somebody help me out today. You cannot assess your situation and change it if you won't let nobody tell you something different. Okay, here's how you know if you're arrogant. Look at every area in your life in which you lack. You're arrogant in that situation. In that field, in that situation, you are arrogant. Look at that, assess your situation. Here's how you assess your situation. What, because you sit right there? <laughs> My staff said, why are you looking at me? Well, you're sitting in front of me, I'm making eye contact, right? Here's how you assess your situation. Ask yourself, what do I regret? Like, you're in a feeling of regret, but you haven't even discovered what makes you in the feeling of regret. And if you don't know what you regret, then you don't know what you're sabotaging for. Have you ever been there? You have no idea why you're mad and upset. You just feel in some type of mood. And you say, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just feel this because you have yet to assess your situation and you can't assess it because you're too arrogant. A lot of you are mad at good men or mad at good women because they're not packaged in the situation or skin color you want them in. Oh, I'm gonna walk hard today. I see it, I see it right now. Let me just fake apologize to you right now <clears throat> because whatever I just said, right? You need to understand that you have to assess your situation. But if you're arrogant, you can't assess anything. You cannot assess a single thing if you're arrogant. It will not happen, cannot happen, shall not happen. It just won't happen. Now, here's another way you move past regret. Ask yourself, is this something I failed to do? Oh, we don't like this part. <coughs> you see, we like to blame other people. We like to tell folk it's their fault. You understand, yeah. You understand. You, 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 you. The second one was uh, assess your situation. The second question, what do I regret? Is it something I did? Is it something that I did? But here's the problem, you don't want to blame you. What does that mean? That means you're always the victim. And if you're always the victim, you're never the victor. That's just simple science. That's just simple science. If you're always being done wrong, you're never the one winning. Listen to me. Listen to me. Let me, let me, let me. Here's this wonderful phone. Look at this wonderful phone. I just, I just used it. I, you know, they made home phones or right? Just, 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 just check this out just for a second. Like, 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 just receive this information. If you always the victim, that means you always down in the press. If you always down in the press, how you winning? Now watch this hit. Watch this hit. Right? Okay. Let me, let me do it again. Let me do it. Pick the phone. This is a plateau. This ain't even winning. This is just flat. But if you're always a victim, now you're down. You, you, you're not even, don't, don't confuse this with upright. This ain't upright. This is just down. This is, you, you know what I'm saying? We'll just make this up. You, you down. And guess what? You the victim your whole life. You make all your decisions from a down place. You ain't never made an up decision in a down posture. Come on, somebody help me out. You ain't never made an up decision in a down posture. You ain't never had an up bank account with a down feeling. You ain't never had an up relationship with a down spouse, a down man. You, you've never, ever in your life benefited from being depressed. Ever. If you keep, now watch this here, if you keep staying down long enough, you will die and you will kill yourself. If you keep staying down long enough, you will kill yourself far before it's early, far before it's your time. You do it two ways, you'll physically die or you'll die at 20 and actually physically die at 80. I'm just trying to get in your driveway today. <clears throat> now watch this here. Here's another way to get past your regret. I'm still, I'm, I'm still in the second question, right? And this is still assessing your situation. So the number one, here's another way to get past your regret. Was this in my control? You know what old, what well, wise old folk do well? They know they can't control everything. Why are you mad at hurricanes blowing your house down? 
but it's my house. But you can't get nobody a hurricane. You know what you do to be a winner? Put insurance on stuff. See, 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 do you see what I just did there? You can actually control the uncontrollable when you prepare for the uncontrollable. That's all right. Step number three in getting past your regret. Figure out how you learned from it. Figure out how you learn from your bad situations and you won't keep having bad situations. Step number four, I'm not even gonna open that one up. Step number four, develop a plan of action. Let me just sit my unempathetic hat here just for a second. Stop thinking so much, please, please, please. Can I, can, can I help you just for a second? Thinkers are poor. If you think all the time, you got a whole lot, you're rich in ideas and cheap and, uh, and, and less expensive in money. And listen, if you, you, you got a bunch of ideas you ain't never packed in your whole life. You done thought about all the ideas and you never moved the pack. If you don't have a plan, you will work for somebody like me that have one. Somebody help me out. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to tell you. It, it, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So, when drawing your plan of action. <coughs> oh, look, I just got paid just now from talking to y'all just now. I just got paid. I just got a little notification on my laptop. That's right. Okay, watch this here. <coughs> if you don't have a plan of action, then you must adjust your behaviors and your habits so you can get one. What does that mean? As simple as this here. If you don't have a plan of action, everything you're doing is wrong, and everybody you're around is doing it wrong. Now, if they have a plan of action, and you still don't have a plan of action, those are people who enjoy keeping you lesser than them. Don't worry about that. I'm coming back to that in point number three. Yes, ma'am. You asked that a lot. If you don't have a plan of action, adjust your habits and your behavior. That means what you're thinking isn't working. Your plan needs to be shifted. Make sense? All right. Number two. Here's how you eliminate your self-sabotaging patterns. Here's how... So, how to eliminate your self-sabotaging patterns is number two. Now, this is free coaching now. Let me tell you, I, there's people that, 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 that this, free, this is free. You getting this for free. <clears throat> you can't even get this in the church. You getting this for free. Here's how you learn how to self-sabotage your patterns. First, you got to identify your behavior that's preventing you from moving forward. See, that's so simple. Let me tell y'all something. If you want to be rich, it takes simplicity. Poor people think that's too easy. It can't be. It has to be something harder than that. Nope. 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 Not at all. You want to stop self-sabotaging? It's very simple. Identify what's stopping you from self-sabotaging. See? See, I don't see enough writing. If you don't stop, if you don't start identifying what's self-sabotaging you, you will never stop what's self-sabotaging you. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you out. Here are some specific things that stop you from self-sabotaging. We're gonna identify these things. Your limited beliefs. Your limited beliefs or your limiting beliefs are creating you to self-sabotage. You know why? Because you think you can't do it. Because you think you're too tired. Because you think only white folk make money. Because you think only blacks are athletes. Because you think all those excuses that you have, whatever that may be. So here's some key, key triggers for you. Um, every time you make excuses, Check yourself. That's you self-sabotaging. Uh-uh. 
uh-uh, uh-uh, lean in, receive me. Every time you, okay, here's what I want you to do. Let's do it this way. I want you to imagine you making the biggest financial goal that you have. Okay, let's do it this way. <clears throat> we're, gonna, we're gonna add them all into one. Let's do it this way, okay? Let's play a little game. Let's play a little game, because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not reaching the fold. Let, let, let's play a little game. I want you to set a financial goal that you've never hit before. I want you to say, I don't know, if, if finance is not your problem, then put it to something that is your problem. You're gonna make six figures before this year is over. Okay, I want you to set that goal. All right, this, this, this is what they do. Now, 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 now lean in, <coughs> walk with me for a second. I want you to take a, everybody, even in front of me, take a deep breath. There you go, let it out. One more time, take a deep breath, let it out. All right, so you blew out your arrogance. I want you to set in your head a goal of making six figures. Now, if, you, if money's not your problem, then make, make another goal. Believe it. I'm telling you, you can make six figures by the end of this year. Believe it. Got it? Now watch this here. Ask yourself how many excuses you made for not getting there. I'm sure I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk down a full list of how you self-sabotage. Okay? You've already. You Listen. Listen to me. I only put the thought in your head for 10 seconds. And you already stopped the next 10 years with an excuse you made today. No, see, see, that somebody, I got somebody in front of me. They're like, oh man, dang, that, that, listen, listen. I only gave you an idea. And you already stopped yourself from our, you haven't even moved. You ain't took a bath. You ain't woke up. You ain't did nothing. And you already told yourself all the excuses of how you can't do what you have. You sat in your chair. You haven't even moved. You sat in your chair and talked yourself out of it. That's how much you self-sabotage. Am I, am I, am I hitting you at, in, in your home? Am I, am I, what'd you say? I get when your driveway, took my shoes off, went in the refrigerator, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I asked you to make a goal of six figures and you immediately said, well, I need to have that, that, that goal specific to me. As if your supreme being a desk or, or a deity said, you know what? That's right. A hundred thousand dollars is too much for me. I know I'm almighty God, but that's too big. Really? Is that how your faith work? Uh, I'm about to walk harder. Watch this here. Now ask yourself how many negative thoughts you had about that. I asked you to get you see she said you got hurt. I asked you. Six figures. We already made excuses, which means we already had self-doubt, self-doubts. Okay? Now ask yourself uh, what type of excuses you made. Were they physical? Were they the people in your life? Were they you black, you white? Were they, I don't live in a, I don't know these people. I've ran out of people on my list. I keep asking, I don't have the education. I don't have time. I don't have this. I'm a woman, I'm a man, I don't have a degree, I don't have a job. All of that is self-sabotaging. Now watch this here. And here's my, my, my strongest self-sabotages. Here's what you've done. Here's what you just did. You literally disagree with me and you promised yourself you're going to prove me wrong and you came up with the greatest idea on planet earth for how stupid and wrong I am and how you fit the disconnect from this live feed and this phone call and how much you hate me and you never going to listen to it again. But guess what? I'm right. You know why I'm right? Because you only thought about it for 10 seconds and you talked yourself out of your breakthrough. How do you know? that you can't do it if you haven't even tried yet. But that's my point. My point is, you talked yourself out of something that you sat yourself down in and didn't even move. That's how much you self-sabotage. You self-sabotage so much that you literally, I just asked you to think and you got tired while you was thinking. You said, ooh, she not gonna like that, I'm like, she not gonna, ooh, I can't do that. Here's a here's good thing. Every time you complained about the goal you just came up, self-sabotaging. 
the biggest, if you ever want to know a self-sabotager, watch how much they complain. I know, folk, it's hot outside. Ooh, it's too hot, child. Then it get cold outside. Ooh, it's too cold. Then you get a sweat. It's your favorite sweat. As soon as you put it on. You haven't even put it on yet. It's your favorite sweat. But the moment you put it on, I shouldn't have bought this. Come on, you're gonna get in my driveway today. It doesn't, doesn't, you you gonna you the you done fooled around and called into my call. You the you you logged in. That's your fault. You should have go go to go to Jolo's. Well, I love Jolo's thing, right? So but go go somewhere else. Somebody's gonna be nicer. The truth is, the moment you get something, you hate it as soon as you get it. You get you a man, you hate that. I wish I was still single. You can't take a compliment. That's a nice dress. Child, this old thing. As if you didn't spend your hard work and money on that dress. You get fly, get put on your little makeup or get your hat cut, and you still, you think you pretty, but as soon as somebody compliments, you can't even take a compliment. Come on now. Come on, come on. You think you're beautiful, but you don't like your pinky toe. You like your pinky toe, but you don't like your nail color. No, 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 no. That's on you. It's beautiful. And guess what? Can I help you out? Since we're all salesmen every day, everybody, it doesn't matter if you're working for commission or not, everybody's a salesman. You're selling your mama <coughs> on your dreams. You're selling, you're selling everybody. You're selling everybody. You're selling, you're selling, you're selling. Watch this here. This is beautiful. Since we all salesmen, check this out. If they don't like your toes, that ain't your customer. Somebody missed what I just said. If they don't like how much you weigh, that's not your customer. Come on. Why are you trying to impress people to like a size 4 dress and you wear a size 12? If you keep trying to impress people that want a size 4 and you wear a size 12, what's going to happen is you're going to let this size 4 person give you low self-esteem. Do you know how many millions of people want a size 12? But you can't never reach them because you're trying to impress the size 4. I'm trying to help you out in this place. I'm, try, I'm trying to help you out. You indulge in negative thoughts. <coughs> you indulge in unhelpful habits. You talk yourself out of unhelpful. You talk to unhelpful people. You dysfunctional, as Tyrese would say. So you hang with dysfunctional people. We're gonna say it people. We're not gonna say it the way he said. You dysfunctional. So you hang with dysfunctional people. That's all you do every day. And then you know what? You know what you know what's the one of the greatest ways to uh self-sabotage? Procrastination. Yeah, I just lost my whole crowd. <laughs> I, I, just, I just lost my whole. I was doing red rev, you was alright, but you know what? You can shut up now. You listen, listen. Procrastination is the key to self-sabotaging. Self so ask yourself, <clears throat> listen, when I resist how I'm feeling, what does this say about me? Some of you get real happy and you immediately resist it. Come on, help me out. You understand what I'm saying? You, 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 you love the Lord, but you hate the church. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in there. I ain't talking about, you know, you, you, you love people, but you don't want to deal with them. But what, that's living me. But you understand what I'm saying, right? You, you, you understand what I'm saying. That you can't have everything your way. It can't happen. It can't happen. Number three, transform your limiting beliefs. Transform your limiting beliefs. Okay, did you write down number three? Did you write down number three? Transform your limiting beliefs. Let me do a little recap for you, because I'm about to, if you thought I was hard, I'm about to walk off the rest of the 15 minutes. <coughs> number one, when self-sabotaging leads to regret and also comes from regret. One and the same. You, you self-sabotage, you regret it. When you regret it, you self-sabotage again. Number two, you got to start eliminating your self-sabotaging habits. <coughs> Number three, since I just told you all about limiting beliefs, now we gotta teach you how to transform your limiting beliefs. Okay? I got nine steps in this. Step number one, choose your desired outcome. I'm gonna list them all to you first and I'll explain. Choose your desired outcome. 
Number two, question your limited beliefs. I'ma hang my hat there. Number one, choose your desired outcome. If you want to change your limited beliefs, focus on what you want, not what you can. Mm -hmm. You want to change your limit. In fact, I'm not even going to explain it yet. Let me just listen to you. I'm just let me do. It. Number one, <coughs> choose your desired outcome. <coughs> Number two, question your limited limiting beliefs. Number three, consider the consequences of your limiting beliefs. Consider the consequences of your limiting beliefs. Number four, choose a new and empowering belief. I'm trying to help you transform. Number five, strengthen your new and empowering belief. I'm going to hang my hat all of these five points. Number six, make a firm decision about what you want to change. Make a decision. You only broke them out. We'll make a decision to change it. That means you gotta start saving. Number seven, progressively condition your new belief. Number eight, make room for your new make room for your make room for your new belief in your life. And then number nine, be, begin using your empowering belief. Now, do I need to repeat those? I'll repeat. Numero uno. Choose your desired outcome. I'm going to repeat them and I'll explain them at the same time. Choose your desired outcome. What does that mean? That means don't focus on what you can't do. Focus on where you're going. If you don't have a target, you don't have no income. You don't have a target, you don't have no happiness. Choose your desired outcome. Number two, question your limiting beliefs. Who in the world told you that's what you get to believe? I understand that you are religious. And I'm, I'm listen, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you not to be religious. That's not my job. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you not to be religious. Be religious, have your faith. But ask yourself this question. Are you in that denomination because you chose to be or because you were born in it? At some point, you're going to have to choose on your own what you believe. The problem is a lot of y'all are holding on to beliefs that are not your own. That's where we're in this phone call. But I'm coming back to it in a second. Number three, choose, I mean, consider the consequences of your limiting beliefs. Choose the consequences of, I mean, consider the consequences of your limiting belief. Did we mess up in the story space? Choose the consequences of your limiting belief. What does that mean? You're going to have to ask yourself. Ask yourself if this is okay for you. Ask yourself if this is what, don't worry about it, right now. Ask yourself if this is okay for you. Number five or four, choose a new and empowering belief. That means what you know, it ain't working for you. Choose something else. <clears throat> Number six, make a firm decision about what you want to change. Number seven, Progressively condition your new belief. Eight, make room for this new belief. Nine, begin using your new empowering belief. Now let's focus on number two for the rest of this phone call. Is it dead? Is it dying? That's all right. Everybody saw who's supposed to see it, right? So check this out. Check me out. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Mic check. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me because we's having some good fun up in this place. Here's what you need to know. You need to know this much. Um, let's see. Hold on, real quick. Let me do with my laptop. There we go. Do with my laptop real quick. All right. So.
So listen, number two, you got limited beliefs. Your beliefs are no longer serving you. Okay? Are you hearing me? Your beliefs are no longer serving you. You understand what I'm saying? Your beliefs are no longer serving you. What does that mean? That means you believe some stuff that you didn't even put there. I'm already live. You believe some stuff that you didn't put there yourself. You didn't put those beliefs there. Somebody else did. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, listen. You didn't put those beliefs there. Somebody else did. No, no, no. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I got nine minutes left. You are a big self sabotager because somebody else told you how to think and you bought into that. Somebody told you you fat. And that became your belief structure, your belief system. And because you had that belief structure and belief system, somebody else put that on you and you let them live with that. Somebody molested you when you was little. You understand what I'm saying? And so since they molested you when you was little and didn't care about you, now you no longer care about you. Oh, you're going to hit me today. I'm not saying that the molestation was not right. What I am saying is since they didn't think right about you, you no longer think right about you. That's why you self-sabotage. I'm not saying you could have avoided that. I'm saying your reaction to that, even in your 30s and 40s, is killing you. Let them and that go. Okay, maybe that's not your problem. Okay, so your parents loved you too much. Okay, I got some problems up in this joint. You understand what I'm saying? So now you gotta let other people love you just like they did. You don't get to compare their love to your parents' love. Oh, you got anger problems. Okay, no problem. So what? Who told you to be angry? Because you were never angry as a child. You, you, you fit that way. Somebody told you to be that way. Maybe you're not pretty. Who told you that? You Christian. Who told you that? I'm not saying don't be Christian. I'm saying make sure you Christian because you want to be Christian. It's real simple. Whether you like it or not, you're killing yourself because you're holding on to other people's belief. And let me tell you something. They will never and have, ever, have never put a belief on you that made you better than them. Oh, y'all gonna hear me today. Y'all gonna hear me today. When you let other people put a belief on you, they would never put a belief on you that makes you better than them. Maybe I ain't said it loud enough this time. I'm gonna do it the third time. Maybe they're gonna get it. When you let me put a belief on you, it would never be a belief that makes you better than me. Because at the very end of the day, I want to be the best. And I'm not going to let you be better than me. I don't care if you make a million dollars as long as you don't make a million and one dollars. Because that's what I got. Now, I'm not saying that's how I feel because I've, I've killed that about me. But before I killed it, it was there. You don't have to teach this. You have kids that you know, whether they're students or your own kids. You have kids you know that haven't played with a toy in three years. Soon as that neighbor come over there and play with that toy, that toy is all of a sudden important. And that's how you let some men and women treat you. Is this clapping inappropriate? I feel like that was appropriate. You have folk that only treat you good because somebody else noticed you. Come on, somebody help me out. I got, I'm just, I'm going, I'm going, listen, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you out. I got six minutes left and I'm going, I'm, I'm going to make this work. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me very well. Some of the folk in your life only value you when other folk value you. But here's the deal. They won't value you completely. They'll value you and make you feel bad that other people are valuing you. And so what ends up occurring is you still sabotage yourself because if you win, your boo-boo gonna make you feel bad. But winning has always been to make you feel, why are you hanging around people 
that make you feel bad for winning. Okay, maybe it's not winning. 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 Okay? Maybe it's not winning. You know what? You know, maybe it's not winning. Maybe it's just it. Maybe, maybe it's just it. Maybe you hang around folk that make you feel bad for feeling good. And that's where we at. The next five minutes. Unfortunately, <coughs> many of you, self-sabotaging is your fault. No, no, it's, 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 it's your fault. You wrong. You self-sabotage. You wrong. You dead wrong. No, 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 no. You super wrong. But guess what? Those people in your life, those people in your life, they let you self-sabotage. They wrong too. Those people in your life, they let you self-sabotage. They don't like you. They ain't never liked you. They ain't liked you since the third grade. And they ain't gonna like you in your thirties. They not gonna like you in your forties. They not gonna like you in your fifties. They still waiting for you to get pregnant and mess up. They waiting for you to get divorced. They done been divorced two times already. They don't like you. You let people counsel you that have never been in a significant relationship of any value and they telling you about your relationship. And so listen, even though self-sabotaging is your fault, the people around you have allowed you to continue to self-sabotage. And there lies your problem. The problem is, it's not just you. The problem is, it's the folk around you. The problem is, the folk around you, parents and all, they let you lose. They did the best they could, but they let you lose. Some of them did the best they could to hold you back. And you got to die in order for them to appreciate you. Oh, yeah, I didn't like that. Some of the folk in your life will not speak a good word about you until they're doing your two-minute expressions. And then they're going to disrespect your dead body and take 15 minutes. Listen. Let's go ahead and knock this out. Here's what you need to understand. You're self-sabotaging. Because your life is filled with regret. You regret, they regret, 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 stop regretting. You have never done something so bad that God still can't hook you up. You ain't, you, you, no, no, just because he gonna leave you don't mean that your God will. And just because she gonna leave you don't mean that you gonna leave yourself. You don't have to self sacrifice about it's never been about them it's always been about you and it's your job to make sure that what is about you is given to other people so I encourage you I encourage you on this day in this life this this whatever I encourage you to do this here stop self-sabotaging I'm gonna continue to teach you how last week I taught you something this week is regret Stop regretting. Stop regretting. Stop regretting. Let me get closer. Stop <laughs> regretting. Let me get over here. Stop regretting. You know why? Regret <laughs> never put money in your bank account. My name is Antonio T. Smith Jr. I cannot tell you what to do or how to do it. Here's what I can tell you that if you decide to ever plant better seeds, you will always have a better quality of life. Thank you for coming out. God bless it, thou, and good night.